less hours presumably you spend studying. Questionable effects on your overall GPA. Uh, well, this has seven observations, which would be on the high side of however many. So we've got seven observations. Thing that's a good idea to do is just to graph this. Is there a relationship? Yeah. Yes. Let's uh, guesstimate the slope and intercept. So why are we doing this? Why are we constructing a scatter plot and at least giving ourselves some idea of what we're looking for? So that our answers don't be ridiculous. Exactly. And quite often, when you do these types of problems, you will get ridiculous answers. You'll just do something goofy, and then that will propagate through your answer, and you'll get something so mind-bogglingly wrong that answering that would not be a good idea, um, in which case having a check is, is what we're doing. All right, so the first thing we do is we calculate the differences between x and its mean, y, and y's mean. So we get, well, first, well, the first thing we do is actually sum. Yes? What do you do if you have multiple regression and you plot still? How do you plot? You'd have to plot against, you'd have to have multiple okay. graphs. If you have two independent variables, you could plot it in three dimensions. That's true. So you have more than one, more than two, then uh, yeah, it's a whole other point. So do you care about it at that point? Care 
care, but on the other hand, you can't. Is it smart linear? Well, it's linear, but it's, it's hyperplane. It's very hard to draw a hyperplane. I, I can't do it. Okay, so let's see. 18, 26, 27. You really didn't expect me to answer that, did you? No. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? <laughs> Minus six. Fifteen. Minus nine is six. Eight minus nine is minus one. Zero. Three. It's good to be on the same playing field. Uh, 3.6 minus 3 is uh, 0 0.6. Square everything pretty much. So we get point minus point, uh, sorry, minus six squared is thirty six. Six squared is also thirty six. One zero. 0.6 squared is then 0.36, minus 1 squared is 1, 0.01, 1, 0.16, 0.25, 0.64, 2.5, Finally, we add them, I'm sorry, we multiply them together. So minus 6 times minus 0.6 is minus 3.6. We get minus 6, minus 0 0.1, 0, minus 1.5, minus 1.2, and minus 1.0. So 1 plus 6, then plus 7. That is the sum of squares across products. And if you recall, when we calculated, well, so I might calculate, waved our arms, and found the solution to the minimum of the sum of squared errors, we came up with two equations, right? One for the slope, one for the intercept. The one for the slope is what we calculate first. Beta 1 hat is sum of squares cross products divided by the sum of squares the x's. So that's minus 16.4 over 116, which is approximately minus 0 0.1414. And what is the 
second line. The second, or the second equation comes from knowing that the line passes through a particular point. Okay. Is that a hand or? Yeah, it's, it's maybe a hand. <laughs> the last column in our in our chart. Yeah. Can you uh, dig deeper into that? You lost me in the arithmetic. Okay, so we take minus six times minus point six, which is minus three point six. We may have made a mistake in math error. Is that what you're? That's right. That's so six times minus one, minus six. Okay. Minus one times point okay. nine is minus point nine. Got it. In the headers, those are supposed to be squared. The x1 minus x bar. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Definitely. Definitely got to square these things. And you add them up, right? And then you add them up. Yeah. Um, okay, so the one point, if you plug in x bar, what pops out? So we've got 9 and 3, 9 here, 3 there, so that's about there. And what that's saying is that y bar is equal to theta 0 hat plus theta 1 hat x bar. Do we now have enough information? Is there anything missing from that equation? One unknown, right? And that's what we're going to solve for. So that's um, three minus minus zero point. Remember what we used this for? I'm sorry. Do you remember what we used this for before we got to regression? around x. We use this for something quite particular that pretty much we've talked about every day. Variation? Variance. 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 Right. And standard deviation, right? We just divided by n minus 1 to get the variance. But simple word. Um, okay, similarly, and, and basically in many ways, regression is a study of variance. Yes? But the question coming back to multiple regression on the test, uh -huh. it's unfair for you to ask to do multiple regression on test because you didn't show any multiple regression by hand during class or in the textbook for that matter. Uh, it's not only unfair, it's impossible. Yeah. You have to do, uh, you, you have to use linear algebra in order to do that. There will be no progression on the test, but it won't be from scratch. No. I didn't realize that's what you're asking. Um, there's no way I'd there's no way I'd ask you to do that because you'd never get done. I mean doing a single problem would take you hours and hours and hours. It would make the well the example look puny. Um but this this is fair game. Uh, 
Um, okay. So we've got the line, right? We've got the estimates. Somehow it's a serious difficulty to get from calculating the estimates to writing down the ordinary least squares line. So again, what is the ordinary least squares line, also called the fitted line, the estimated line, the progression line? What is it? Minus 0.1414x. Very good. And we're going to label that. What, what is it that we, if we plug in x, we get? Blank. Blank. Yeah, very good. So is everybody comfortable with that? Now, the data generating process is assumed to be y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So the 4.27 is an estimate for beta 0. The minus, one, uh, minus 0.1414 is an estimate for beta 1. We haven't yet estimated anything about epsilon, um, but we don't really need to do that much because our assumption is that epsilon is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a fixed standard deviation. So what is the only thing we need to estimate? Or left to estimate? Standard deviation. The standard deviation. So before we do, well actually, let's do one other thing. Let's also indicate where that line is. So that's Something like that. the next step? We've got the line. Should we do anything with it? We can predict something. We can? Why don't we predict what y hat should be when x is 3? What would y hat be when x is 3? So for the first observation, you have 4.27. Minus 0 0.1414 times 3. And we're going to put that right there. What is that? 3.8 something. Okay, eight. You're being volunteered. Sorry, I just had a quick question. The, for what, for step one, isn't it negative 0.14.4? Or did, what, what, is it still negative, or did I just miss something? Here? Yeah. It's negative. So 4.27 minus 0.1414 times 8. Right? You need to have a negative in order to get below 4.27. Oh, okay. So why is it clear that if 8 has an expected GPA of 3.14, if you go one more up with the X, you end up with 3.00? It's a straight line, right? So how do you know? 
change. Mm -hmm. Its slope is 0.14 right. per unit of x. Right. Slope is negative 0.14, so you increase x by 1, you will decrease y hat by the slope. Or you could just look to see that if the averages are 3 and 9, and this happens to x hat y hat. Right? The same thing we did That's over there. That's very true. Yes. Okay, else? So what are the. Very good. 12. This one we don't really do much. We just use that to get to the residual. So we take 3.6, subtract 3.85, minus 0 0.15, 2.0 minus 0.15, also minus 0.15. And here we get minus 0.04. It's not right. Oh, it's 2 5. Thank you. Is that right? Actually, 4 cancels out that one. Well, it's within rounding, is what we're going to declare there. So then we square. Zero zero one six. Zero zero one six. Zero zero one six. <coughs> zero happy there. This one I can do, I think. Um, four nine. Mm -hmm. No. Too many That's zeros right. again. <laughs> That's right, two zeros. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, zero nine. Three zeros. Three, you have it. Okay. Good. Okay, when we add up these, what do we get? Ignoring rounding, can we make the sum squared error smaller by choosing a different slope or intercept? Yeah. Very good. Do you remember that? And that's the minimum we're trying to get. Very good. That is, in fact, the minimum we're trying to get. So that's point one. The second question is, well, what can we do with the sum squared errors? And just as before, we can use the sum squared errors to calculate the standard error, to estimate that one piece that we had not yet gotten to. So, um, so the mean square error is the sum of squared errors 
divided by the degrees of freedom for theirs, we start out with 7, n, n to the 7, and we lose how many degrees of freedom? We have to estimate how many things in order to get a straight line? One. Two. So, two. 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 Yeah. So, so, seven. Yeah. Yes. so we lose 2, and we have 5 degrees of freedom left over. So this is 0 0.2624 divided by 7 minus 2. So that's 5, so this should be 0 0.05. Which is what? 0.2291? Hmm? I think it should be 0, 2.23 if I remember correctly. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Now, this is going to be another hint. When I ask to roughly what precision you can apply this model, you look to the standard error. Why is that? What do you use? We need oh, I missed the word. We need the R squared. We haven't done it yet. Don't we, don't we do the R squared? <coughs> well, we haven't done it yet. Does that tell you your position? The position that it has? R squared? R squared tells you the it's an estimate of the um, variation in y that you can account for using x. So to some extent, I can see the confusion, but the, the code phrase, roughly with precision, is really saying, OK, if you apply this model, how close are you going to be most of the time? And R squared doesn't really answer that question. Okay. It's talking about the empirical rule, isn't it? Oh, exactly. And so, we want 95% of the observations to be within some buffer. No longer. Two standard deviations. So two standard deviations here is 2 times 0 0.23 or 0 0.26. 0, I'm sorry, 0 0.46. 0 0.46 watts. What are the units? actually something that is underplayed in most uh, most regression presentations, but it means that if you just have the output, you can make predictions and you can just say something about how robust your predictions are immediately, which is unusual. Okay, the second thing we want to ask ourselves is, well, do we explain anything? I mean, from the model, from the data, it looks okay. But if we want to 
to test whether or not there's any relationship between x and y, what statement about the parameters can we test? One of them is not equal to true. So the null hypothesis we want to test is this, which means for the alternative, the beta one is not equal to zero, and that's step one. What's step two? Question above. You asked, um, can you phrase the question with the standard deviation? I didn't write it down. Directly? What precision? So precision is sort of a code word. Can you apply this model? Step two in a hypothesis test. Yes, yes. That would be step three. Hi, hi, hi. There we go. A rejection region. And what do we need in order to come up with a rejection region? Alpha. What do we need in order to come up with any kind of hypothesis test? Mm, something like that. P value. P value. Well, this is something you need in order to get a p-value. You don't need alpha to get a p-value. Confidence yeah. is only for a certain, uh, certain type of hypothesis, but you're on the right track, and f is what? that when I say it, it's going to seem obvious, you know, duh, sort of thing, but it's important to come up with it, because if you don't, um, it's still going to seem like black magic. Mean value. Mean is that zero. part of it. Yes, the mean is zero, good. Zero. So how else? far are you away from that? Exactly, and in order to say something about how surprised you are by the distance away from that you are, you need you need T. But in general, so we've got F, we've got T, what are those examples of? Yeah. Yeah. Not rule, but if you need something that will tell you roughly how surprised you should be, margin of error, we'll, we'll, we're going to get a margin of error from this type of this animal, yes? Okay. But well, is that <laughs> What's that? An estimate. Yeah. Yes, we will need an estimate, but we need something <laughs> that tells us something about the estimate. How surprised we are by the estimate. If I just throw yes, out the number. Oh, standard deviation. Yeah. Closer. Very. Standard deviation. It's like literally the elephant in the room. Um, <laughs> a line. What's that? A line. A line. Well, a line would be good. But let me do this. I'll throw out a number. 4,872,922. Are you surprised? No. Why not? This is just number. That's right. So it's a test statistic. What would you need in order to be surprised? Yeah. You, okay, and? Standard deviation or standard error. Okay, very good. So if you have mu and you have the standard deviation, you're nearly there. You and standard deviation are parts of this animal, the elephant in the room. Oh, the standard deviation. See, I told you. It was a moment. You have to have a probability distribution. Right? I know it seems obvious, but in retrospect, but if you don't have that, you cannot move forward. And there will be situations where you will not have a probability distribution. You won't know what to do, or you won't know how to find one. There won't be any fixed way to uh, come up with one. So make sure that that's the first <coughs> stop on your train of thought. 
make sure you have a probability distribution. And now, okay, what kind of a probability distribution are we dealing with? Um, T. Very good. With how many degrees of freedom? Uh, five. Excellent. And if you're not told anything else, what significance level shall we use? Uh, 95%. That would be the confidence level. 0.05. With 0 0.05, right. Okay, so the distribution looks like this. And it is in fact T distributed with five degrees of freedom. We're gonna have a 5% alpha. And the standardized test statistic is then T distributed uh, and the beta one hat is centered around zero. So that standardized test statistic uh, is going to give us the critical value. And then what is the critical value? 2.6. No and no. 1.96 would be for Z, right? So you know it's a number larger than that because this is T distributed. So 2.56. Close. How do you find the critical value? Just tell me sort of in theory how you do it. Ten. Okay. What do you look up on the table? On which table? Okay. What's that? 2.57. 2.57, yes. So what did you look up? T distribution. Uh-huh. And in the T distribution, you look up. I have to make sure, because this is the type of error that's just sort of unnecessary. 0.05 and just in case of the infinity, the point is in five. Oh. Not infinity. Infinity is zero. Zero. Zero point, exactly. You look, did look up 0 0.025, right? And then which row? Degrees of freedom. Five? Five, right? Five degrees of freedom. And so the critical value is? 2.57. Right. Everybody happy with that? Okay. So the critical value is 2.57. And so the rejection region is everything below minus 2.57 union 2.57 positive infinity. How did you get the degrees of freedom over in five? And minus two. And minus two. Well, and minus one is correct when you're dealing with means, just means. But remember here, in addition to a mean, you've got a slope. So you can't do the uh, estimation. Okay, step three. If, if you're dealing with three, like a three-dimensional, is it an n minus three? Just out of curiosity. Yes. So if like you have... Each variable, what's that? each variable that would be an unknown would be... A, uh, Precisely. So you've got one more thing to estimate, right? And one more slope for each, plus the intercept. And you have to deduct all that from n. Okay, the standardized test statistic. Is beta 1 hat minus the hypothesized mean, which is, you have got that one. Zero. Zero, good. Divided by the standard deviation of beta 1 hat. So we've got minus 0 0.1414 minus 0 over <laughs> what? What is the standard deviation of beta 1 hat? Is it just S? It's related to S. Remember we had, when we were dealing with just means, we had S versus S out spread of N, right? Slightly, slightly different now. It's just S over the square root of the sum squared of the X's.
those two. Is that in the rejection region? Yes, minus six is certainly roughly here. Definitely the rejection region. So the last step. Standardized test statistic is in the rejection region, and we reject the null and conclude that our model explains more than nothing. This would be cause for celebration. How much more than nothing? Kevin, this would be what you were asking about. How do we answer the question, how much more than nothing? That's what R squared tells you. It's the amount of the variation in Y, so in GPA, that is accounted for by the number of hours in a bar. And we're somewhat running out of space. We're going to use a different color and hope for the best. So R squared is 1 minus the variation we can't explain divided by the total variation. So 1 minus 0.624 over 2.58, approximately 0 0.9. Was the SSY, was that the SST also? Here, yes. <coughs> Absolutely. So this is saying that 90% of the variation in GPA is explained by our spent review. So, step four there, yeah. basically say, the, since the test is, the statistic is in the rejection region, you reject the mold and conclude that uh, the model is means the model is better than nothing. So there's some relationship between X and Y. If beta 1 was 0, then you wouldn't have any relationship between X and Y. Now you concluded that beta 1 is not 0, right? This is false. This is true. Because beta 1 is different from 0, it tells you something about Y. And that's what leads you to the next question of, well, okay, what does it, how much does it tell us? And of course, this is made up data because be kind of stunning to see hours spent drinking explain 90% of your grade. Um, so that's how you say it right there. What's up? When you're, when you're looking for that in the answer, that, that last part right there, 90%. Oh, here? Your grade. Yeah. Yeah, 90% of the variation in GPA is accounted for by the hours spent with the dog gas. After you state that conclusion, you follow up with R squared. Exactly. Exactly. And then you can also do things like uh, for interpretation purposes. If I asked you what is the interpretation of the intercept, frankly, you could say, well, it's the, what the model tells you is you spend no hours in the bar. But strictly speaking, for the purpose of this class, I would prefer that you not extrapolate at all, because you don't have any data down there. In this example, everybody spends time in the bar, so you don't, just don't know. So in a exam environment, just say that either the, of those answers, or would you prefer us to say we can't extrapolate? Prefer that you say you cannot extrapolate because that way I know that you're aware of the problem. And uh, you know, in real life, obviously, you use your common sense and apply the model with the, to where you think you can. Um, but the problem is almost always in reining in over exuberant use of a regression where it's not um, applicable. Um, so it's better to sort of focus on that aspect, in my opinion. But if we said something like, okay, what is um, the predicted value of Y, predicted GPA, if you spent five hours drinking. 
Well, phi, you don't have any particular phi, but it's certainly within the range for your data. So that's a valid question. And that you can just simply plug in. So y hat, if x is equal to 5, is just 4.27 minus 0 0.14 times 5. And that's uh, 7, 7, so 3.57. Nothing wrong with that. And that's something you can apply the empirical rules of plus or minus 0.46. Uh, you're, you're guesstimating that 95% of observations will fall within 3.57 plus or minus 2s. And the, the last part of the example that's posted is an answer to how to do that formally with uh, prediction rules. And I'll ask that you interpret that, but not, but, but not plug into the formula. It's not that it's all that hard, it's just that once you get into multiple regression, you have to use software anyway. So there's a limited value to it. Other questions? Yeah. In, the, in the solution, we had an interpretation that uh, we decrease the sum of the squared prediction errors 89.87% by using the estimated model to predict GPA rather than using the sample mean GPA. What is that? Well, okay, so one thing you could do is just use the sample mean of three. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just that you don't then take into account the extra information you have. The extra information you have is the amount of time spent drinking. So when you do that, you're now improving your ability to predict GPA, right? You're getting closer to that blue line, or you're getting closer to the dots using the blue line. Yes? Okay. The variation that Y has around this overall mean is what you're trying to cut down. And you do cut it down by tilting the entire line and looking at the difference now between the tilted line and those dots. And what it's saying is that by tilting the line, allowing a regression, you have gotten such a decrease in the variation around that line compared to the original mean, uh, that that decrease is about 90%. So that's, that was Carrie's way, to, or that, that's the way she prefers to interpret it. And I think it's, it works, it's just not intuitive. Other questions? All right, in that case, I think, oh, what? So, for project purposes, yeah. Well, let's, let's do project after the break. Um, we will get to it. But I'd prefer that we sort of get done with this before I forget, because I really would do want to have Bob give you the evals. You do the evals, then when he tells me you're done, the break will start. We'll take a break, and then we'll come back and begin with other questions.